Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over some advanced JavaScript concepts that I believe will be extremely helpful for any React developers in 2024. Whether you're looking to optimize your code or just write cleaner React code, I think all of the concepts I'll be listing will be helpful in one way or another, because although I believe that JavaScript is not necessary to fully understand before starting to learn React, it is definitely an essential tool for you to become a more advanced React developer later on in your development journey. So before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate that. That would help push my videos to more people and I would be eternally grateful if you guys could do that. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. As we dive into learning difficult concepts and optimizing our React applications, I think it is important to also optimize your learning experience. Now, if you enjoy watching my kind of content and the way that I explain things, I think Brilliant.org is a great place for you to expand your content that you're learning because it is a platform that follows the same teaching style that I follow. I personally vouch for hands-on learning where I expect you guys to uh, spend some time practicing and doing exercises on your own as you watch my videos. And that's exactly the same principles that are followed in every single one of brilliance courses. It's not just about watching and listening. It's actually about doing and learning. Now in this video, we're obviously going over some advanced topics and topics that I personally think are a little bit advanced for beginners, however necessary for you to understand as a developer trying to get into the software engineering field. And similar to this, Brilliant offers a variety of courses and topics that are important as well. I personally vouch for the computer science fundamentals course because it teaches you to wrap your mind around computational thinking, where you're going to be able to build solid foundations for computer science and basically make your computer do whatever you want in an elegant and performant way. This whole video that you're going to watch is literally about this, about understanding the core concepts in order to improve your code quality and performance. And that's exactly the kind of information and knowledge you're going to gain from a variety of courses in Brilliant's catalog. Now, if you're interested in checking them out, you can actually start Brilliant for completely free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash Pedro Tech. The link for that will be in the description together with a 20% off if you choose to go with their annual premium subscription. I've talked about Brilliant a bunch of times and it's because it is the best learning platform out there for topics in computer science and I personally vouch for them. So if you're interested in checking them out, go into the description and let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So the first concept that I want to talk about is the concept of closure, which is actually uh, a concept that I believe you guys already utilize in your day to day react development uh, timeline. However, I think a lot of people actually don't fully understand it. Now closures in its most simple definition is something that is created when a function is defined inside another function, allowing the inner function to access the outer function scope, even after the outer function is finished executing. So uh, it's basically when you create two functions, right? But one is inside of the other and information in the top level function is still available for the inner function even after it's done. Now I'm showing on the screen right here an example in JavaScript of what this can look like. In this example, we have this create counter function, which uh, has this count variable, and it returns a function that increments that count uh, variable and also console logs its value. So the interesting part of this is that when you call the create counter function, you can assign its return value to a variable, in this case, the counter variable. And then you can then call that counter ver uh, function multiple times, and you'll see that the, the value returned from that, it's going to be different. The first time you call, it will be one, the second time you call it will be two. Now, why is this cool? Because it allows you to access that count variable that is defined on the create counter function after the create counter function has been called, and you without you having to call it again. Now, where have you seen this before? Where have you seen this pattern? Well, a common example of this would be seeing this in a custom hook, for example, a use counter hook in React, where you could have some sort of uh, function like an increment function, which increments the, the counter. And you can also just return back from the custom hook, both the increment function and the actual counter value. So then later on in your app, you can access the, the values of the counter and the increment function 
even after you call the custom hook. So you've probably seen this before, but you may not actually know what closures are. Now, the second concept I want to talk about is the concept of currying. Well, the concept of currying is taking a function with multiple arguments and separating it into a series of functions, each taking one argument. Now, why exactly would you want to do that? Well, because it makes your code cleaner, more modular and more reusable. Now, here is a JavaScript example of what currying is. We have this add function that actually takes in two arguments, right? A and B. Now, this function is as simple as it gets, right? You can just make it like this and just return A plus B. However, in simple terms, currying would be if you created a function, let's call it curried add, and only take one argument, which is A. And then inside of that uh, curried function, you would return another function that takes the argument B and then add A plus B, which then allows you to create some sort of variable, uh, which is representative in this example, uh, as a function that allows you to add five to any other number. And then you can call that add five function with any value for B. And now you have a very simple function that allows you to always add to by five, for example. Now, this is the most simple example I could think of of curry. And that's why it might be a little bit confusing on why it's actually useful. So I'm going to show you guys an example of it in react. So you guys can understand a little bit better. So if you've worked with react in a more in industry level, you've probably dealt with some older uh, react patterns like higher order components. And seen that currying is being used in, in a lot of code bases out there. But not only that, if you if you have uh, existing components, you can enhance its functionality by utilizing this concept. So in the example I'm showing you here in the screen, we have this handle input change function, which as you can see, returns another function, right, both with two different arguments. So this is a curried function. Now, in this example, the actual argument takes in a a variety of field names. So uh, things that you can uh, like input values that you can have in your form. And it returns back a function with the event as an argument. Now, why would we do this? Well, as you can see, if we have different types of inputs, and we have different type of events, um, and this can be really easy for reusability purposes, you can have multiple functions, uh, and multiple functionalities being being used, um, without really having to create multiple functions. Also, the whole concept of modularity, because the logic for handling the inputs is separated into small and focused functions, making the code somewhat easier uh, to maintain, but also just uh, flexibility, because uh, you're able to uh, dynamically create handlers for different input fields, uh, without really having to duplicate code inside of your uh, application. So uh, you might be thinking again, uh, those are two very similar things, closure and curry, uh, like curried functions. But the thing is, they are intertwined, right there, there are different concepts, but intertwined. So uh, both of them, I think, are very easily seen in react, especially through other parts of uh, most react code bases out there. Now, the last uh, concept I want to talk about is the concept of memoization. And I know a lot of you guys might immediately comment saying like, why are you talking about memos? Uh, they use memo hook and they use callback hook or deprecated in react and you really don't need to learn it anymore. And I think that's very dangerous uh, advice. Because uh, one thing people don't understand is first of all, it's not deprecated. Uh, I would say 99% of the code bases out there still use you memo and use callback. And also, how long does people think it takes for um, code bases, especially at jobs to actually migrate uh, usage, right? So if you have a code base from like five or six years ago, that has is full of the uh, of this functions and hooks being used, how long do you think it's going to take for them to remove all of them, especially because what is it like, is there a benefit? What's the cost benefit of, of removing that if, if it's like, you can improve by just continuing to not add more of them into your code, but it doesn't mean you need to remove the old usages of it. So I still think a lot of people will end up uh, encountering stuff like uh, they use memo hook and they use callback hook. And I think it's important to understand. Now, I'm going to show you a very, very complicated example of memoization in JavaScript. So in the screen, you can see an example of the use memo and use callback hook being used multiple times inside of a react component. What it basically is, is uh, different hooks that can be used 
whenever you have functions or variables that depend on a specific other variable, which then you don't want to recomputate every time the component re renders. You only want actually wants to re, uh, recompute the values uh, whenever that specific variable uh, changes. Now, as an example, I have here actually a more practical example where um, imagine you have a website and you want to be able to filter through a list to be able to display that information. Um, while filtering, you have to execute some sort of computation. And that value can actually differ in the impact that it causes to your performance a lot, depending on the size of the list. In the example we have over here, the list is actually pretty small. However, imagine that you are like a massive website and you're, fil you're trying to write a search input to search the list of users in your website. So that can actually be pretty big. Uh, obviously, there's more sophisticated ways to uh, filter in that case. But uh, imagine just a big list, which can be translated to a big computation, right? You might have some sort of function that is executing that computation and then returning the value. However, that function depends on some sort of variable. In our case over here, uh, what it depends is not only the variable items, but also the, val the, va the variable search term. Because search term is what we get from while the user is typing. So it's kind of like as the user types, we want to immediately filter through the list and uh, show the filtered value. So we only care about recomputing this value and this filtering whenever either the items list change, change, either the items list changes or the search term changes. So that's why we wrap that whole computation around with the use memo. And what that basically will do is tell React that um, you only actually recomputate that value. And what that basically does is it tells React to only compute that value um, whenever there's a change in one of those values and not actually at every re render. And you can do the exact same thing for functions. Uh, you can tell React to render functions um, at uh, depending on some sort of value uh, instead of at every re render, and that's what the use callback is meant for. And there's benefits, like insane amounts of benefits uh, for using memoization. It is a very common concept in JavaScript as well. Now, the main benefit is obviously uh, performance, right? And uh, avoiding like being very specific with how your your components are re-rendering, you're only re-rendering and computing a certain value uh, exactly on the, the exact amount that you want it to actually be computed. Uh, a lot of people don't actually realize that they're actually re-rendering unnecessarily uh, a lot of components inside of their application because they probably don't use React DevTools to see exactly how many times their components are re-rendering. So certain things like that can really help performance, especially at an upper scale. Uh, so I definitely think that that's a really important concept that you need to understand, even though, like I said, in 2024 and above, uh, React announced that in its new version, um, you won't need to do that because it will the compiler will basically do it for you. So um, I think it's one of those things where uh, a lot of people say that you end up abstracting so much with a, a, a library such as React that you end up missing the, the basic fundamental core JavaScript that exists there. So that's why I think it's still important to understand this, even though it won't be practically used later on. Now, that's basically it. The three concepts I wanted to talk about. Uh, I appreciate if you guys watched the video until now. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Uh, a lot of people comment a lot of things, but it's impossible to make a video about everything. So uh, I'll look at the ones that I see have the most demand. So if you see a comment about a topic that you really, really want to watch, uh, please leave a like on that as well, because then I'll be able to see that a lot of people liked it and I'll make a video on that. Thank you so much. Brilliant for sponsoring in this video. You know, if you don't have money, obviously, I never ask for donations. But if you want to do, uh, donate to me or help me in any way possible, uh, check out our sponsors, it helps the channel so much, you have no idea. So definitely click a link in the description. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in the platform, it's a pretty nice platform. I've, I've personally used it, uh, like I said, so I definitely recommend it. Now that's basically it, everyone. Thank you for watching. And I see you guys next time. Yeah.